Back on the town hall now with Regal Cinemas, the second biggest movie theater chain in the country, closing 39 locations. This after Business Insider reports that Regal's parent company, Cineworld, has filed for bankruptcy. Now, the closings include two theaters here in western New York. Our Danielle Church talked to moviegoers today and a film industry expert to find out more about what this could mean for the local cinema scene. The Regal Theater in Williamsville and this one in North Buffalo will soon close their doors for good. It's definitely sad to see because there was so many memories and so many good times here. We're going to miss this place. This, yeah, this is close by and it's a good theater. Both still have show times through at least the 26th, though it's not clear when they'll have their final day of business. I reached out to Regal but haven't heard back. I feel like now I might be home because the far out drive is going to be way too long. Regal closed a dozen other theaters prior to filing for bankruptcy. Business Insider reports the company just can't seem to rebound from the pandemic. I understand that because of the pandemic, obviously all the cinema theaters, they have struggled a lot, but then now new movies are coming. They are, but not fast enough. Movie productions were halted for 18 months and it's created yet another supply chain issue. It's really hit Regal hard because they mostly show Hollywood blockbusters. I mean, even Top Gun Maverick, that was the number one of the number one hits this year, was filmed before the pandemic. Business Insider reports filing for bankruptcy will allow Cineworld to get out of leases without major penalties. That's a savings of $22 million a year. But some film industry experts say this could all be a negotiating tactic, especially when most locations in the filings are in bigger markets. So although temporary closure is imminent, I don't know that these locations will be permanently closed. So one suspects they've made a decision that the cost of these locations that they're renting is too much in comparison what the, with what they're bringing in. So they're signaling to the landlords that either they lower the leases or they'll vacate. He says it could work in Buffalo, but probably not in places like New York City, where the real estate market is extremely valuable. Prior to the pandemic, the U.S. box office was taking in more than $11 billion. That's down to about $7.4 billion. Still, there are those who want to be at a theater for an experience much different than the one on your couch. No doubt on that, watching movie in theater is really enjoyable and it's awesome. And I am really sorry for that, that if they really shut down this place, we'll be missing that. And Danielle joins us now. You mentioned the experience watching on your couch. A lot of people are going to assume that streaming services are playing a big role in all this. Yeah, they certainly do, but not as big as a lot of people might think. Barker tells me streaming services also have issues of their own. In fact, he says Disney has lost $11 billion through streaming, not exactly sustainable. Barker says if we learned anything from the pandemic and the most recent blizzard, it's that people like to get out of their house every once in a while. And if you give them something that they want to see, they will go. Barker says the financial model for, model for Hollywood has to include theaters because it's the only way to generate big box office revenues that will create big budget films. Michael. Got to have the movies in order to have the movie theaters. So exactly. It's back on track. All right. No, so I better. Danielle, thank you.